everybody knows what to do. Everybody knows what's going on in the oceans and the rainforest. Everybody knows what's going on in the desert encroaching. Everybody knows what's right. But there's millions and millions of people out there who are completely uncommitted. And I just ask them to look at this, what we've done here, all of us together. Though it's not any earth-shaking thing, it's something. We did something. And that's what I ask everybody else to do. Welcome back. Gorgeous shot there, wasn't it? Well, after four years, more than 5,000 miles of practice, a 61-year-old grandfather is ready to take the plunge. Not that plunge. Pa Ellis plans to swim Mexico's 35-mile Yucatan Peninsula starting tomorrow. And all this just to raise awareness of the dangers facing the ocean's coral reefs. And Paul has been kind enough to join us by phone this morning. I don't know if it's in between his workouts or what. Hi, Paul. Good morning. So, um, how hard a feat is this to cross the Yucatan Channel when you're swimming? You've tried this before. Yes, the weather and the current turned against us, and it was a... Uh... After 11 hours, we abandoned the swim, but I was determined to try it again, and here we are. And it... You say that the dream success would be for a million people to join an organization uh, about clean water issues, but that's, that's a really right, yeah. hefty number. It is, but thanks to you and, uh, and other media outlets, we, uh, we are reaching more and more people, and we so much appreciate you making our swim a success before I even touch the water. And we, there are so many people who are becoming aware of the condition of the planet that we feel that something of this, uh, of this nature is a, uh, would grab their attention and let people know that it's never too late to take action, uh, even at 61. Uh, at 61, you've been training for four years, speaking of a long time, and you're trying to bring attention to the problems facing the coral reefs. And some may ask, so what's the big deal with the coral reefs? The coral reefs are immensely important to the e ecosystem and the biosphere of the earth. Only on the coral reefs are new species of fish generated. So if we lose those, the diversity of the ocean will gradually diminish, and the long-term prognosis would be uh, devastating to the planet. The coral reefs might be the most precious and beautiful gift that God's given us on the planet. You look at the water, you'd never really believe what's underneath it unless you took a look. And the uses of them are many, but the most uh, prominent is the fact that the, the creative beauty of it, just the natural beauty of it, that alone is worth uh, every effort that we can do to preserve them. I was thinking about what could I do as a person that hadn't already been done before, and. What could I do as a layman, not being a, a, a scientist? And really, my what could I do with the frustration I felt with what I saw around me and what was um, demonstrated to me visually and viscerally when I took my family on a trip around Mexico once in a van, and we came upon Isla Mujeres, where I had seen the the uh, fish life first years before. In, in its abundance and naturalness. And what I saw was um, devastating to my, my consciousness. Uh, instead of clouds of fish, there were clouds of black algae and uh, lack of life. And I wondered what was going on and why it was happening. And I started studying. And after I became aware that um, indeed the health of the oceans was declining, the thought wouldn't leave me, and I, I love the ocean, I love the, what's in, in the ocean, the coral reefs, and I'm a kind of an adventurous person, a former uh, marine aviator, and, and I've done a lot of things that were exciting to me, and I wanted to do something for myself, uh, for the reefs. This is what the swim's all about, right here, and hopefully that the effort that we were able to do and the success that we had on the swim will in some way some small measure, make it more possible for these wonderful people to 
have a better shot at seeing the wonders of the world than I've seen. And I see into their eyes and I see not only just them, I see their children too. And I want them to have a really nice life and I want them to see the coral reefs as vibrant and alive as they are right today. Thank you all for coming. I dedicate this swim to my grandchildren and indeed to all the grandchildren of the world. I'm telling the science, yeah. okay? Something's wrong, I need help, so we see the hand out of it. Splash in the water. I actually met Paul uh, when Brad was here. He introduced us to us and he talked to us about doing this big project in Cozumel. Bye, Megan. Bye, Emily. Bye, Caitlin. Bye, Amber. There is no knowing what's going to happen to you. There is no guarantees in anything. And I wanted to make sure that, that, that they heard that. If you're the first person that's picked up on the fact that I said goodbye. But I wanted to say goodbye. I have all the hopes in the world that I would walk up on the beaches of Cancun. And I really believed in my heart that I would. But I said goodbye for a reason. Somehow, we got through the night, and I, and I just I just felt the love, peace. I thought about my friends back in Barton Springs who had, who had told me they were thinking about me, I thought, uh, including uh, several people who, who vowed and promised me that they were going to stay up all night long watching the website, and they didn't want to sleep when I was in the water. And the, indeed, that's what they did. They called me later on and said uh, that they were there for me, right? And I knew they were there for me. The, the people who were around me, my family, friends, and teammates, wonderful captains and crew on the ships that were, were doing were with me. And those Navy Marines, by the way, in case I needed them, were still there. <laughs> so I could, you know, draw on my nana if I needed it, right? But uh, somehow or other we got through the night. And I think the Dramamine, uh, you know, because he's swimming, probably wouldn't make him that sleepy. And if he starts uh, th throwing up, then we're kind of behind the eight ball. So... And I honestly thought at that point that here I am and I'm not going to make the swim. I'm not going to make the shore. And I, I, I did, this feeling of almost panic came over. I thought, you know, I just soon drown out here, not make the swim. But these weird. I mean, you can imagine. I was just completely beyond physical. It, it was the thousand-yard stare person. Nothing was in my tank. I didn't want to. And it's all I wanted to do was finish. Paul's been in the water for 13 and a half hours now. He is extremely exhausted. He can barely even talk right now. She came out of the water, and I did too. And she just looked at me. She said, one of those direct, wonderful things. She said, your family and your friends are waiting on the shore. That's all she said. Your family and your friends are waiting on the shore. Oh, and I put my face down in the water and just felt this uh, uh, this feeling that that uh, and it made me cry a little bit. Uh, I was very, starting to get a little emo emotional. Our goal is to have uh, one million people join or an organization somewhat like ours that has some focus on the coral reefs and do it in the name of Swim for the Reefs so that we would know that we had accomplished our mission. Our planet needs help. Every scientist worth their doctorate will tell you in their longitudinal studies that the planet's warming, that our ecology is suffering, the oceans of the world are being depleted of the major game fish, and that the coral reefs themselves are uh, disintegrating. But we're at the crossroads, and I think anybody that's looking at it objectively will tell you that if we care, things will get better. That's what I've chosen to do is care, I want to help the planet. I'm sure you do too. Uh, let's find something that we can all get involved in. And we invite you to 
participate and swim for the reef and help us save the coral reefs of the planet.